If you've been feeling like ChatGPT just isn't hitting the same lately, you're not alone. OpenAI just issued a code red inside their company. And what I'm about to show you reveals why even the AI giants are scrambling right now. The shift happening behind the scenes is bigger than most people realize, and it's going to change how you use AI tools in 2025. Welcome back to bitbiased.ai, where we do the research so you don't have to. Join our community of AI enthusiasts with our free weekly newsletter. Click the link in the description below to subscribe. You will get the key AI news, tools, and learning resources to stay ahead. So in this video, I'm breaking down the five biggest AI updates you need to know this week. We're talking about OpenAI's internal alarm bells, why Google's Gemini is suddenly everywhere, the video AI model that just beat everyone, and some surprising numbers that show the AI race is way closer than you think. First up, let's talk about what's really going on inside OpenAI right now. OpenAI's wake-up call, the code red moment. Here's something you probably noticed, but couldn't quite put your finger on. ChatGPT's daily active users are dropping. And I'm not talking about a small dip. We're talking about a decline significant enough that Sam Altman himself sent an urgent memo to the entire company, calling it a code red situation. Now, before we go any further, let's understand what this actually means. OpenAI isn't shutting down or anything dramatic like that. But they are hitting pause on a bunch of exciting projects they were working on. We're talking about the shopping agent features, those advertising integrations they were testing, even something called Pulse that was supposed to personalize your experience. All of it? Shelved. At least for now. And here's where it gets interesting. The reason behind this sudden shift comes down to one thing. They're refocusing on what actually made ChatGPT successful in the first place. Fast responses, reliable answers, and that conversational feel that made it feel almost human. Somewhere along the way, while they were busy building all these new features and expanding into different product lines, they lost sight of what users actually care about. The timing of this isn't random either. Google's Gemini models have been absolutely exploding in popularity, and we'll get to those numbers in a minute because they're going to surprise you. But the competition isn't just about Google anymore. Anthropics Claude is getting better at coding and reasoning tasks. The playing field is leveling out faster than anyone expected. What Altman's memo emphasized, according to insiders, was winning back user trust by focusing on three core things. Stability, personality, and speed. Think about it. How many times have you gotten a slow response from ChatGPT lately? Or had it give you a generic answer that felt off? Those little frustrations add up, and in a market where you have Gemini and Claude just to click away, users aren't afraid to switch. This whole situation tells us something important about where the AI industry is heading. It's not just about who has the most advanced model anymore. It's about execution, user experience, and actually delivering on what you promise. OpenAI built the AI chatbot market, but maintaining that lead? That's proving to be a completely different challenge. The Google Surge. Gemini's unexpected comeback. While OpenAI is regrouping, Google has been quietly building something impressive. And I mean really impressive. Their latest Gemini 3 model isn't just competing with GPT-5. According to multiple benchmarks, it's actually outperforming it in several key areas, especially when it comes to multimodal reasoning and handling really long contexts. But wait, there's more. This isn't just about benchmark scores that only researchers care about. The Gemini app now has over 650 million monthly users. Let me say that again because I want you to grasp this number. 650 million. That's getting dangerously close to ChatGPT's user base, and the growth curve is steeper than anyone predicted. What's even more telling is the engagement data. Users aren't just downloading Gemini and forgetting about it. They're actually spending more time per session on Gemini than on ChatGPT. That's huge. It suggests people aren't just trying it out of curiosity, they're finding real value and coming back. Now, Google has some massive advantages here that we need to talk about. They're integrating Gemini across their entire ecosystem. Think about it. You've got Search, Android, Gmail, Google Docs, all of it working together. 
If you're already living in the Google universe, and let's be honest, most of us are, Gemini becomes the natural choice. It's already there, it's convenient, and it's getting better fast. The market is responding too. Alphabet stock has been climbing steadily, and investors seem confident that Google's unified AI strategy is the right play. Meanwhile, OpenAI is dealing with rising compute costs, the pressure of maintaining their innovation speed, and the challenge of supporting both consumer and enterprise products simultaneously. What we're seeing here is a fundamental shift in how the AI race is being won. Raw model capability still matters, obviously. But distribution, ecosystem integration, and user experience? Those are becoming just as important, maybe even more so. Google understands this better than anyone. They've been playing the long game with deep pockets and infrastructure that most competitors simply can't match. The question isn't whether Google is a real threat anymore. They clearly are. The question is whether OpenAI can maintain their first mover advantage when the competition has this much momentum and these kinds of resources. Runway's Gen 4.5, the new video king. If you've been following AI video generation at all, you know it's been a bit of a wild west. Lots of impressive demos, sure, but also plenty of weird artifacts, unnatural movements, and physics that just felt off. Well, Runway just dropped Gen 4.5, and according to the benchmarks, they didn't just improve, they took the crown. On the artificial analysis text-to-video leaderboard, Gen 4.5 is now ranked number one in the world. It beat Google's VO3, OpenAI's Sora 2 Pro, and Pika across the board. We're talking about physics accuracy, human motion realism, and scene consistency. All the things that matter when you're actually trying to create something usable, not just cool-looking demos. Here's what makes this release different. Previous AI video tools could create visually impressive clips, but if you looked closely, something always felt wrong. Maybe gravity wasn't quite right, or people moved in this slightly uncanny way that broke the illusion. Gen 4.5 addresses these fundamental issues. Objects fall naturally, collisions look real, and character animations are smooth without that jittery quality that plagued earlier versions. But the improvements go beyond just fixing what was broken. Gen 4.5 shows major upgrades in multi-shot continuity, which means maintaining consistency across different scenes. It's got better motion tracking, so following a subject through a video actually works now. And the cinematic framing? It's starting to understand composition in a way that feels intentional, not accidental. For creators, this matters in a practical sense. Runway is positioning Gen 4.5 not as a toy or a demo tool, but as something you can actually use in production. Faster generation times mean you're not waiting around forever for renders. Improved prompt control gives you the precision you need to dial in exactly what you want. These aren't flashy features, but they're what make the difference between cool technology and useful tool. The creative industry is paying attention. Brands and studios are already starting to adopt AI-first pipelines, and Gen 4.5's level of quality makes that transition easier to justify. You can find early examples circulating online that showcase what's possible, and honestly, some of them are hard to distinguish from traditionally produced content. This is the kind of progress that changes workflows, not overnight, but steadily. And as these tools continue improving at this pace, the line between AI-generated and human-created content is going to get blurrier and blurrier. The numbers don't lie, Gemini's explosive growth. Let's talk about some numbers that really put things in perspective. In October, ChatGPT was still the undisputed leader with 85 million monthly downloads. Solid, right? But here's what caught everyone off guard. Gemini hit 64 million downloads that same month. Now you might think that's still a comfortable gap for OpenAI, but consider this. In August, just two months earlier, Gemini only had 16 million downloads. Do the math. That's a 4x increase in 90 days. That's not just growth, that's explosive momentum. This is one of the strongest growth spurts we've seen in the AI app space all year, and it's happening right when ChatGPT is seeing user decline. The timing couldn't be more telling.
What's driving this surge? A big part of it is Gemini's image generation capability, which has quickly become a standout feature. Casual users and creators are gravitating toward it, and once they're in the Gemini ecosystem, they're finding reasons to stay. The data backs this up too. Users are spending more time per session on Gemini compared to both ChatGPT and Claude. That last point is worth unpacking. Time per session is a crucial metric because it shows actual engagement, not just curiosity. People aren't just opening Gemini, asking one question, and leaving. They're having longer interactions, which suggests they're getting value from the experience and trusting it with more complex tasks. Now let's be clear. ChatGPT is still the global leader by a significant margin. Their brand recognition is unmatched, their developer ecosystem is massive, and they have the advantage of being first to market. But for the first time, we're seeing a real two-horse race between OpenAI and Google. The gap is narrowing, and it's narrowing fast. This raises an interesting question about where the market is heading in 2025. Are we moving toward multimodal creativity, where Gemini's image generation and Google's ecosystem give them an edge? Or will the focus shift back to deeper reasoning and problem-solving capabilities, where ChatGPT has traditionally excelled? Right now, users seem to want both, and whoever can deliver the most complete package might end up winning the long game. The leaderboard hasn't changed yet. ChatGPT is still number one. But the trajectory is clear, and if these trends continue, we could be looking at a very different competitive landscape in just a few months. Beyond headlines. Before we wrap up, there are three quick stories that didn't make the main segments but are absolutely worth knowing about. Microsoft sounds the alarm on AI's energy problem. Microsoft's CEO Satya Nadella made some pretty candid comments about AI's sustainability challenge. He said the industry needs to earn the social permission to keep expanding, especially considering how much energy these AI data centers consume. We're talking about unprecedented power demands that are putting real pressure on electrical grids worldwide. Nadella's point is that as AI becomes more fundamental to how we work and live, the environmental footprint matters more and more. He's calling for a focus on efficiency, renewable energy adoption, and being transparent with the public about what this technology actually costs in terms of resources. It's a reminder that the AI race isn't just about who builds the best model. It's also about whether we can scale this technology responsibly. AI Companions Helping Fight Senior Loneliness in South Korea Here's something that's both heartbreaking and hopeful. South Korea is dealing with a severe elderly mental health crisis. Ten seniors die by suicide every day, and one-third of elderly people now live alone. In response, the government started deploying an AI plush companion called Hyodol. This isn't just a cute toy. Hyodol greets users, reminds them to take medication, tracks daily habits, and offers genuine emotional support. Over 12,000 units are already in use through welfare programs, and the early results are encouraging. Studies show reduced depression levels, improved cognition, and in some cases, delayed admission to nursing homes. It's a powerful example of AI being used to address real human needs, and it shows that technology can be part of the solution to social isolation, especially as populations age globally. Disney Plus gets into AI video creation. Disney just announced one of the biggest updates to Disney Plus since the platform launched in 2019. Soon subscribers will be able to generate their own short AI-powered videos using official Disney characters. We're talking Darth Vader, Iron Man, characters from Frozen, the whole catalog. Why is Disney doing this? Because unlicensed AI content featuring Disney characters is already flooding TikTok and YouTube. Rather than just fighting it with legal action, Disney is essentially saying, fine, here's the official way to do it. They're reclaiming control while also opening up a new era of fan-driven creativity. This move positions Disney Plus as more than just a streaming service. It becomes an interactive platform where you're not just consuming stories, you're participating in them. It's a glimpse into how entertainment companies are thinking about AI. 
not as a threat, but as a tool to deepen engagement and unlock new experiences. So there you have it. Five major AI updates that are shaping what 2025 is going to look like. OpenAI is in damage control mode. Google is surging harder than anyone expected. Runway just set a new standard for AI video, and the competitive landscape is tightening fast. The big takeaway? The AI race isn't slowing down. If anything, it's accelerating. And the winners won't necessarily be the ones with the most advanced models. They'll be the ones who understand what users actually need and can deliver it consistently. If you found this breakdown helpful, let me know in the comments what AI tool you're using most right now and why. Are you Team ChatGPT, Team Gemini, or are you experimenting with something else? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you want to stay updated on the AI world without drowning in hype and technical jargon, consider subscribing. I break down these stories every week so you can stay informed without needing a PhD. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.